Alright guys, I'm finally ready to give you my full review of probably the best mechanical keyboard Rackiers has to offer, and arguably the best amongst all local brands here in the Philippines, the highly anticipated Rack Haribon. The Rack Haribon is Rackiers' first mechanical keyboard made out of CNC aluminum, not to mention the first from the brand that features the popular Alice layout. No one thought that they jumped straight to the niche enthusiast Alice layout instead of conforming to the norm of safe and typical 60%, 75%, and 10 keyless layouts. This just means that the popular local brand really wants to go deeper into the rabbit hole, catering to not just the budget market space but also to budget-minded enthusiasts like myself. Now, aside from the CNC aluminum chassis and the Alice layout, this keyboard also features a dedicated volume knob, dual connectivity options with Bluetooth and wired mode, a gasket mount design with pretty much all the typical sound dampening materials inside, south-facing hot swappable sockets, and most importantly, compatible with highly customizable VIA software. I'm one of those that have been waiting for Rackiers to finally release a wireless CNC aluminum keyboard, so to say that I'm excited would be an understatement. So with that being said, let's get into it. Now, like my review of the Rack Hanan, for my international viewers, you might want to skip this one since this keyboard will just be available here in the Philippines, but you might want to stick around to get an idea of what we're getting here. Starting off from the packaging, while it resembles the typical black and yellow colorway of the brand, you can definitely feel that extra premium vibe it has going for. Around the box, we have some of its key features, and as you can tell, it's loaded with highly sought after features. Inside the box, the first thing that you'll notice is the user manual, which I'll let you take a screenshot here so that you can get an idea about its functionalities. Next, we have the Rack Haribon Barebones kit itself, and underneath it, we have another accessory box. Inside the box, we have a wire keycap and switch puller, and a braided USB Type-A to Type-C cable. At first look and touch, you'll definitely notice the premium feel of the Rack Haribon in comparison to pretty much all of their previous plastic keyboards. Don't get me wrong, this is not on the same level as the real deal premium keyboards that cost well over 400 US dollars, but for what it's worth in comparison with the rest of the competition at its estimated price tag, this is definitely one of the best options. It's not perfect though, as I'll share with you the rest of my thoughts later. It weighs roughly around 1,579 grams, which is not too crazy considering it's made out of aluminum. As for the layout, we have the popular Ali slash Ariso layout with a dedicated volume knob also made out of CNC aluminum. We have a few extra keys here on the left side, the split alphanumeric layout with split space bars and dedicated arrow keys. Looking at the front side, we have this sort of polygonal shape that looks quite interesting. And flipping it on its side, we have a standard profile for that ergonomic form factor. Flipping it on the back side, we have the USB Type-C port here at the center, and as you can see, the sides of this keyboard are pretty clean and sleek. Turning it all over at the bottom, we have four small rubber feet, eight brass screws, and a DeBose rack logo right here at the center. Now, I asked Rack Gears if what I have here represents 100% of the actual product that we're getting, and they said that in terms of overall aesthetics, it's 100% ready for prime time. But they'll probably change some other things, like the brass screws, which will be changed into stainless steel. Alright guys, you know what time it is, it's time to tear this keyboard apart so that you'll get a better understanding of how this keyboard is constructed and how easy it is to modify. Opening this keyboard up is actually pretty easy. All you have to do is remove the A screws here at the bottom. All screws are the same length, so don't worry about it. Again, just setting expectations right, these brass screws will be replaced with stainless steel. Now after that, you can easily lift the top cover off like so. As you can see, we don't have any gaskets here because all the gaskets are located on the plate itself. Now gently remove the PCB and plate combo so as to not damage the wires underneath it that connects the daughter board and the battery. Here on the bottom case, we have a case foam made out of poron. It is rather thin but should get the job done. Underneath that, we have a relatively small 2000mAh of battery which is kind of a bummer. I don't know if it is because of space limitation but 2000mAh is rather small especially to the standard. Most keyboards that I've had has at least 3000 to 4000mAh of battery. Going back to the case foam, I think you can add a little bit more here if you want. Now, in terms of the gaskets, this keyboard features silicon gaskets for a total of 10. Gasket material honestly depends on each individual's preference. Some prefer silicon and some prefer poron, and I think it would be nice if Rackiers includes or at least offer poron gaskets for this keyboard. In terms of the stabilizers, I was informed that these are Rackiers own developed screw-in stabilizers and will not be pre-lubed out of the factory. The hot swap sockets on the PCB are made by Kale, and will support both 3-pin and 5-pin switches. Now, after removing the screws that are holding the PCB and plate together, as well as the volume knob, 
we can now have a better view of the polycarbonate plate which unfortunately is the only option. But like with Rakhanan, I think local plate makers will offer custom plates for this one like POM, FR4 and the like. Aside from the bottom case foam, we also have a porn foam dampener in between the PCB and plate to reduce the hollow and reverb sounds. And on top of that, well actually at the bottom of that, is an extra PE foam for that enhanced poppy sound signature. It also has this sort of glossy film like what the bottom case foam of the Rack Hanan has that I think is anti-static. Again, these stabilizers will not come pre-lube to give users the freedom to choose their own lubricant and method of modification. And that's about it for the teardown experience. As you can imagine, it is pretty straightforward and you don't even have to remove the switches and keycaps in order to access the bottom case should you choose to add that popular tape mod, change caskets, or add a little bit of bottom case foam. Now here's how the LEDs look when you accidentally turn on the keyboard by plugging in the battery since this keyboard doesn't have a dedicated power switch. So yeah, very bright and vibrant SMD LEDs. Now to finish this build, I'm going to install these lubed Rakatala linear switches which are a sort of alternative to the popular NK cream switches made out of POM material. Notice that the FN and caps lock key doesn't light up and that is because as per rack gears, these keys are only for LED indicators so just bear that in mind. And lastly for the keycaps, I'm going to use the Novel Keys Charcoal Cherry Profile PBT die sub keycaps. And since this board features south facing hot swap sockets, we don't need to worry about interference when it comes to short pole switches and cherry profile keycaps. Now I asked Rack Gears if they are going to offer a keycap set for this but as expected, they probably won't since this layout is quite a niche and the MOQs for the keycap set are quite high which I definitely understand. As you can see, even the Novel Keys Charcoal doesn't have proper space bars for the split space bar layout so I had to use shift keys instead. By the way, before I forgot, Rack Gears will have an exclusive collaboration with Iron Meets Wood for custom wrist stress as you can see here. And they'll have at least two designs that should perfectly match the Rack Haribon. They are made out of solid mahogany and wenge wood. Check the link below to learn more. Now before I share with you all the other features and functionalities of the Rack Haribon, here's a quick sound test for you guys. Alright, so in terms of the other functionalities, I won't go over all of this in the user manual but what's important here is that we have two connectivity modes, Bluetooth and Wired. For Bluetooth, you can only pair two devices under F and plus Z and X which is kinda odd. Usually, we can connect up to at least three different devices. Not a total deal breaker for me to be honest. However, it is worth noting that we don't have 2.4GHz option here which I guess is another way to cut costs. This one is a downside for me personally since it's super convenient to just plug in a USB dongle and type away compared to pairing Bluetooth and stuff. Not to mention the lower latency performance of 2.4GHz. But still not a total deal breaker either. Especially the fact that the Bluetooth performance is pretty decent and doesn't have any significant perceivable input lag. Another thing that's worth noting here is that we don't have a physical switch which is kinda common when it comes to keyboards with aluminum casing. Instead, you'll have to press FN plus caps lock for 5 seconds to turn the wireless connection on and off. Like I said earlier, the FN and Cups Lock Keys Illumination only serves as LED indicators and you'll only see both when the Cups Lock is activated. So if you want to see the charging indicator, you'll have to press the Cups Lock. Now in terms of the lighting effects, you can just refer to the user manual for the specific key combinations but let me breeze through all of them here so that you can have a bit of an idea.
Now, in terms of NKRO performance, on wired mode, we can press as many keys as we want without conflicts, which is good for fast typists and for games that requires multiple key presses at the same time. However, on Bluetooth, we only have 6 key rollover. Now, on the other side, the good thing here is that unlike most budget keyboards, the Rack Haribon fully supports via software, which is really convenient, thanks to the quite intuitive user interface. It works in wired mode only, and all you have to do is load the JSON file, which I think will be available on Rack Gear's website. Inside the software, you can easily remap keys, and as you can see, I remap the print screen here and the left windows key since the Alice layout doesn't have one. I also created a macro here for showing the desktop when I press the right side control key. Of course, aside from that, you can change a key function to a different key, media shortcuts, macros, layers, special keys, you get the idea. You can also configure the lighting effects here, which I didn't bother with since I won't be using them. Other things that I need to mention, this will be the only color variant, and they have no plans on restocking after this batch. They will also offer the STL file for the knob, and custom cables from known brands will work on this keyboard. And lastly, the polling rate for wired and wireless is 1000Hz and 125Hz respectively. Overall, in terms of my final thoughts about the Rack Haribon, I mentioned earlier that it is probably the best mechanical keyboard Rack Gears has to offer, and regardless of its shortcomings, I still stand by that. You have to understand that being the best doesn't always mean it's perfect. It's best in the sense that this is their first try at a premium feel keyboard featuring an aluminum chassis and an enthusiast-centric layout. And for an estimated price of less than 9,000 Philippine pesos, it will be one of the most affordable wireless Alice keyboards with an aluminum chassis. So understandably, they had to cut a few corners here and there. But if I have to be perfectly honest with you, none of those is a total deal breaker, at least for my personal preference. 2.4 GHz is probably something that I will really miss, but I'm still okay with Bluetooth. 2000 mAh of battery is quite small, so I'm hoping we can find a way to increase that. Other than that, everything else is just minor in my opinion. And there you have it guys, thank you for watching. Huge thanks to Rack Gears for allowing me to get an exclusive look at this upcoming limited edition keyboard. Yup, you heard it right, this will be a limited edition keyboard, and they said only 100 units will be available, so make sure to follow my socials and Rack Gears so you won't miss it. This will be available this month of December. They didn't say exactly when, and the estimated price will be less than 9,000 Philippine pesos. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the Rack Haribon. Is it something you are willing to consider, or you have something in mind? I'm curious to know. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you appreciate this video, and see you next time. Have a great day guys, you're awesome. <sighs>